Hello and welcome to the ninth RI Golf Podcast of 2018. You're listening to your PGA professional Ryan Ingram and if you haven't tuned in with us before we release one podcast per week giving you swing tips, random life as a golf pro and hot topics on tour throughout the year. So let's get started. In this week's episode we're going to talk about how we can create you a better short game, making it more consistent and efficient to lower your scores. Let's begin. In this episode, we are going to look at three different key areas to help improve your short game. And the next time you're on the golf course, get the golf ball near the hole, as close as possible, or even in the hole, so you can shoot low scores and make them puts a little easier to get in the hole and make them pars. So the first key area that we're going to look at is setup. And what we're going to cover is how we get set up to a chip shot or a pitch shot. I want to cover some bullet points here that we need to achieve when we are getting set up to a short game shot. Secondly, we are going to look at our landing zone, how important it is to when we look at where we are landing the golf ball, visualizing that shot, how much it's going to run. This is going to be changed through loft on the golf club and what golf club you're going to choose. And then we are going to focus on the trajectory of the golf ball so how high how low are you playing them type of shots the loft is going to be key here as well but also a little movement in a change and setup is going to help us achieve all of these different trajectories so you can then picture that shot and produce that shot how you see it and hopefully get you closer to that pin so how do we create a good setup for a short game shot these a few bullet points that I'm going to go over is just a generic chip shot, a generic pitch shot that you can produce. And we look at the different areas that we're going to go through today of how we can slightly change the setup to change the golf ball flight, to change the shot that you're seeing in your mind. So the first thing we want to do for a short game setup is grip down on the golf club. This is going to allow us to gain more control of the club face we are shortening that lever. We're going to reduce that speed of the golf club so we can get full control over that ball flight. The second thing that we're going to look at is moving our weight a bit more favor in that left-hand side, somewhat 60% favor in that left-hand side for a right-handed player, that is, opposite for that left-handed player, if you're listening. So we're going to move our weight left. This is going to steepen that angle of attack. This is going to get golf ball first before ground and give us a good strike on that golf ball, achieving a good amount of spin, a good amount of control over that golf ball. And the third thing that we're going to look at here is where we place the handle. So for a generic pitch shot or a chip shot, we want that handle pressed forward inside that left thigh. Again, it's going to help steepen that angle of attack, get golf ball first, then ground for you amateurs that are listening, maybe you're a, you're a good player also. You might catch it heavy, you might catch it thin. Let's get that handle forward. Let's get golf ball first and you will eliminate them poor strikes onto that golf ball. So once we've got a good setup, technique-wise, we want to look at moving the shoulders. We want a good stable bottom half and we want to turn around that bottom half. The stance is going to be a lot narrower from here because we're not creating as much swing speed we don't need to have a nice big wide stance to create any balance as such so a narrow stance get that top half working more independently from the bottom half use the bottom half as a base that you're going to turn around and that will help create a bit more consistency to your stroke of your your chip shots or your pitch pitch shots i.e swing that's what i mean by stroke and therefore create more consistent results at impact. So because it's a more accurate shot, we want to create more consistency with it. There's more can kind of go wrong because it's a shorter movement. So we need to kind of eliminate the the body moving as much when we play in these type of shots to create a bit more consistency. So the next area that I want to cover is trajectory and how we are going to change the trajectory of the golf ball when we are playing these chip shots. So how can we change the loft by one, club choice. 
or we've got the other option of moving the shaft of the golf club to create loft onto that golf club that you have. So let's go with the sand wedge, somewhat 54 to 56 degrees for a sand wedge. And what we're going to do is use that golf club, make that the number one golf club around the green that you're going to use. And it may be 60 for you, it may be a little less, but you want to have that kind of go-to club when you're playing these shots around the green that you've worked with, you've practiced with on the short game area, on the practice facilities that you have, and you're very confident of using this golf club to manipulate in this golf club to different lofts, different movements of, of setup, so you can achieve different shots when you're around the green. So to get over that bunker, get over water, hit them shots that there's not much green to work with, or you're playing the opposite one where you're playing that a little bit lower like I'm just going about explain with trajectory and we can see that golf ball traveling that little bit further, checking up maybe a couple of hops and stop. All these type of shots can be played by just moving a different position with your trajectory and your setup with the lofts of the golf club. So you may want to go down from that go-to club. You may want to lower that loft to a pitching wedge, a 9-iron, an 8-iron when you're on the green great clubs to use you can even use lower lofted clubs if you've got a little bit more green to work with the hybrid tends to be used a lot around the green by the pros these days so it's a good versatile club to be using especially when you're on the fringe just take that a little bit out of play and we've got all these types of shots use your imagination when you're trying to create these but we do have to create the setups that needed to achieve these so different trajectories Yes, how can we create different trajectories with the same golf club? This is what I'm going to go through today and hopefully give you an idea of what you can work on the next time you're practicing on the short game area at your driving range or facilities that you have at home. So trajectory, shaft lean. Shaft lean is the most important part when we're we're looking at trajectory with the, the loft on the golf club. If we move that shaft towards your right thigh or towards your left thigh, this is going to increase the loft towards the right thigh or it's going to decrease the loft towards the left thigh. So this is going to change that trajectory on the golf ball towards the left thigh, it's going to go lower. Towards the right thigh, it's going to go higher. So the three positions that I like to look at when we're changing loft is the butt end of the club pointing towards your belt buckle or belly button. This is going to create the most loft on that golf club the second one will be inside that left thigh so that's going to produce that generic shot that medium trajectory and the third one is the middle of that left thigh so this is going to produce a low loft on that golf club and get that golf ball rolling a little bit further when it lands onto the surface of the green so by doing this we're changing the the height of the golf ball. Therefore, we're going to also change how much that golf ball is going to run. So how much green have we got to work with? Yeah, where are we going to land the golf ball, which I'm going to go into shortly. And then you've got to look at, okay, what ball flight am I going to try to create? What height, what trajectory am I going to create with this pitch shot to get that golf ball nice and close to the flag? These trajectories will need to be practiced so you know what the result of them different trajectories are. So what I mean by that is how much is it going to run with the higher flight, the medium flight, and then the lower flight. And also, like I say, you could use this go-to club, this sand wedge, or a different loft with a specialist type of club, a wedge that you're using around the green. But you can also do this with different clubs, your pitching wedge, your 9-9, your 8-iron, also to get them to different trajectories. So you've got multiple options when you're around the green and you've got that creative edge when you're trying to play them them special shots and getting close to that flag. So the next one that I want to go through is our landing zone and where we land the golf ball. The first place that we want to look for when we're landing the golf ball is the first flat spot. So when we land in that golf ball, we want to land it and we know want to know what it's going to react like. 
So is it going to bounce straight? Is it going to bounce left? Is it going to bounce right? What you're trying to find is that flat spot so you can predict that movement of that golf ball. It's going to it's going to run maybe on from there, but is it going to react from that position? Two bounces. If we had a downhill lie, it's going to run on further. So we can't really guess or estimate how much that slope is going to produce more of a, a top spin movement on that golf ball, getting it flying further, or that other position where we're uphill, it's going to stop that golf ball quicker. How much is it going to stop it? It's all at estimation. So if we can get that golf ball landing in a flat area, we know how it's going to react. We can then predict the results from there, how much it's going to run, and how much we can then look for when we're looking for the right club choice and trajectory to be used from this key area. So when you're in your short game area and you're practicing your short game shots, your pitch shots and your chip shots, you want to put a landing area out there. Try to gauge and get a feel of the distance that you're going to be able to create that shot from, land that golf ball in that flat area, that landing zone, eight, nine times out of ten, Build that distance or build that feeling so when you're on the golf course, you've got a go-to distance that you can create and you know, right, that's 15 yards. I know the feeling. I can create that and achieve that landing spot. So once you've got this landing zone and this landing area that you know you want the golf ball to be pitched to, you can then work out what trajectory you're going to be using. Have I got loads of green to work with from this landing spot still or have I got a minimal amount of green to work with from this landing spot and from this you're then going to choose your club choice but then you could also choose your shaft angle so is it going to be towards your belly button for that higher lofted club is it going to be inside that left thigh for that medium trajectory or is it going to be at that left inside that left thigh for that lower trajectory what shot are you trying to create from that landing zone to get closest to that pin as possible. So there's not just, okay, I've got a distance, I've got a chip shot, okay, I'm going to take my sand wedge out, try to get this close. There's a process of trying to achieve this. And this is what I want you to to get from today's episode, is that you've got a routine that you need to go through every single chip shot or pitch shot that you hit, work out what's my landing zone, What trajectory do I want to play? What club choice am I going to use to get that golf ball closest to the flag? Put this into practice the next time you're working on your short game and you will see greater results and getting that golf ball close to the flag, making them short putts easier. Instead of being five, six feet still, they're going to be two, three feet. And we know that's a lot easier to get the golf ball in the hole from them distances. Less three putts lower scores, and lower handicap. You'll be able to find on my YouTube channel videos to go along with this podcast to help visualize what we've been talking about in this ninth episode of RLI Golf Podcast. And you'll be able to type into YouTube RLI Golf and you will find access to over 60 videos now to improve your game. Don't forget, if you like this episode, click the subscribe button. You'll be notified when these episodes go live each week and you'll find more content to view and learn at the RLI Golf social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, you've been listening to your PGA professional, Ryan Ingram. Bye for now.